Hey everyone, my name is Nicole May and today I want to share with you some easy and affordable ways to improve your self-care this winter. The holidays are over but COVID is still here and the weather can still get us down so I want to help you start the new year off in a positive way. The first thing I like to do is go back to a childhood hobby. This could mean painting, collecting rocks, astronomy discoveries or photography or even making sock puppets. Think about what you love to do, not because you had to or because your parents made you, but what really made you happy as a kid. People are multifaceted and as we grow older, we tend to prioritize responsibility over playfulness but both still exist inside of us. Whatever your go-to childhood hobby was came from an intrinsic or natural place. Continuing on the note of childhood joy, I love to listen to the music that was around when I was about 13 to 18 years old. Listening to music from your youth is associated with positive emotional memories, and you can do this genuinely anywhere, on your way to work, out for a walk, or if you're having trouble falling asleep. When you listen to music from your younger years, you're taking your brain on a reminiscent trip and firing dopamine into your system. That's the brain chemical that allows us to feel pleasure. The next thing I do to improve my self-care in the winter is to have a me evening once a week. Most people I talk to don't feel like there's enough time in the world, whether because of work or school or family. We all struggle to have proper days off and oftentimes fill them up with errands. But I can guarantee we all have time for at least one evening off. Schedule it in, have a milkshake, call a friend you haven't heard from in years, go get a coffee and people watch at a cafe or drive somewhere you've never been before, or watch a documentary. Personally, I love learning about things I've never even thought of before on my time off, but whatever your idea of relaxation and de-stressing is, make sure to give yourself at least one evening a week to do it. And the next day, Talk to the sun. If you have a therapist already, that's even better. But for most people, therapy is quite expensive and inaccessible. Research shows that two thirds of adults and three quarters of teens don't have access to adequate mental health resources. Lucky for us, the sun is free. And research also shows that just the littlest bit of sun exposure can help ward off seasonal affective disorder, which is a form of depression. Sometimes when I'm feeling more negative emotions than positive ones, I just start talking out loud and that's something you could do too. Whether you're in your bedroom or backyard, out for a walk or a drive, just start talking about how your day has been and then maybe add on how you've been feeling about the people around you. Maybe rant about work or your significant other. Start saying the things that you never thought you'd say out loud. Put it out there and see how it feels. Did anything interesting come out? Because if so, write it down. Personally, I love journaling, but scrap pieces of paper and sticky notes work as well just as long as you have some way of keeping them. As your collection of thoughts grow, you'll realize a lot of them are connected. Maybe one day you're writing about how spilling wine on your carpet made you cry, and then three months later, you're writing about a memory you had of your dad yelling at you when you spilled his drink on the carpet. More things are connected than you realize and writing them down will help you discover that. Plus, research also shows that journaling, drawing, and writing poetry helps to regulate our emotions and calm us down. Lastly, what we can do is make a list of things we've always wanted to do, but never have, and then do one of them. Maybe you've always wanted to learn a new language, there's plenty of YouTube videos to help you out. Or make the thickest cheesecake. There's hundreds of recipes online. Perhaps you've always wanted to learn a choreography or get a tattoo or write a book. Essentially, make a bucket list of manageable and obtainable ideas without having to feel like you need to do every single one. You always have the option of doing more in the future, but because we're just starting off, pick one and see where it takes you. I know there's a lot of barriers to do with self-care, including a lack of time and money, but I'm hoping this list brings a new and more accessible way to tackle it. I believe it's important for all of us to tend to our mental health, and as you just saw, there's a lot of ways to do it. For me, it's all about starting with just one little thing, so it's realistic rather than overwhelming. For CBC's Creator Network, I'm Nicole May.